Hey, guess what's happening on this week's episode of the Beating Diabetes podcast with your friend and host, Oscar Camejo. Can you relate to this scenario? You're in the checkout line at the grocery store. You're probably the third or fourth person in line. And then you notice two mini refrigerators, one on your left and the other on your right. Both of them are filled with ice cold drinks. I'm talking sodas, juices, sports drinks, energy drinks, sweet teas, lemonades, and maybe a few water bottles way down at the bottom, tucked away. All of a sudden, you're thirsty and hungry at the same time. Out of habit, you open one of the refrigerators and help yourself to a nice cold soda, your favorite Coke. By this time, there's only two people ahead of you just before it's time for you to check out. In the meantime, you swim through the sea of sweet treats on both sides. I'm talking chewing gum, hard candy, and even your favorite milk chocolates on either side. You're in heaven. So what do you do? You go for it and you grab one or two chocolate bars for the road. Oh, and some gum. But by the time you jump in your car and head home, you've already devoured your favorite sweet treat and started washing it down with that cold beverage you just bought. But then guilt kicks in. You say to yourself, dang, here we go again. Why am I still hungry? I just ate. You look down at the passenger seat to see the empty bag of fast food you had just an hour ago before you even started shopping at the grocery store. Yeah, that number three double cheeseburger with bacon, light mayo, lettuce, tomatoes, no onions, large fries, and a chocolate chip cookie. And of course, a Coke. Oh, and the barbecue sauce on the side. Jesus. But then you think to yourself, I need to really pull myself together. I'm going to the gym next week, for real this time. If you can relate to this scenario, then stick around to hear the rest of today's episode. We're going to be talking about cravings and specifically sugar cravings. You may be surprised to learn that you have a sugar addiction. Some of us call it a sweet tooth. But don't worry, you're not alone. So let's discuss some practical ways to kick your sugar addiction. You do, okay? You just gotta give them a little bit of time. That's it. Oh, I can do a little bit. Yeah, okay. Oh, here we go. Who's that? Look hey, Teddy. Here. Hey, baby. How you doing? I'm good. Yeah. What you doing here? Doing here, watching my investment. <laughs> yeah. What's going on? Oh, no. <laughs> I love that skit. That soundbite is actually copywritten and owned by Dwayne Coley, a.k.a. Country Wayne, the comedian. So I don't own the copyright. Welcome to the Beating Diabetes podcast, helping diabetics make lifestyle changes to reverse type 2 diabetes. I'm your host, Oscar Camejo. So today's episode is called Sugar Daddy, How to Stop Your Sugar Cravings. First of all, I want to dedicate today's episode to my dad, Oscar Camejo Sr., who passed away back in 2018, the day after Father's Day. I love you, dad. Now, some of y'all may be wondering, okay, well, what's up with this Sugar Daddy title? (laughs) You probably were thinking like, oh, is he going to be talking about like actual sugar daddies? No, nah, not quite, <laughs> but I thought it was a cool way just to grab people's attention. But you know, back in the day, they used to have this candy called Sugar Daddy. We're going to be talking about candy and um, sweets and that nice, delicious stuff that we like to snack on. <laughs> That's not helping us at all. So one of the reasons why I wanted to dedicate this episode to my dad is because, man, my dad, he was the the rock in my life, if you will. Uh, my mom as well. But, you know, dads play a special role, an important role in our upbringing. So I'm glad I had a great relationship with both of my parents, you know, especially my dad. But, you know, my dad, you know, his story was just interesting. He's actually Cuban. And very friendly, got along with everybody. People just loved my dad. He was very social, you know, outgoing. I mean, you talk about 
I, he didn't know strangers. Everybody was his friend. So I really admire that about my dad. And, you know, I hope to be half the man that he is and taught me to be. So, you know, my dad used to make fresh squeezed lemonade uh, with tons of sugar. <laughs> he used to make it in this old beat up metal gray pitcher looking thing. I mean, I could still picture it to this day. I mean, that thing was old. It had dings all over it, man. But that was his favorite tin can, you know, and um, he just always had these like blocks of ice in it with his lemonade. Now, my dad, like I said, he 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 was very outgoing. So when it came to food and drinks, you know, that was just a part of just life, man. But the whole sugar thing, I mean, yeah, my dad used to cut up the uh, lemons or even lime and he would just make this fresh squeezed lemonade. And I just remember seeing all this white sugary substance just going in and it tasted so fresh. So <laughs> we used to go every day to the store. We would walk to the store every day in Miami. You know, that's where I'm from uh, originally. And so we would just go to the store and he would like get fresh fruit, you know, or meats from the butcher, go to the seafood place to get food. So my dad really never ate leftovers from what I remember. He would always cook like every day, what seems like. At this age, I find myself doing the same thing. I find myself these days just conversing with different people as I go to the store every day and get fruit and stuff like that. So I miss my dad. You know, so as a kid, I remember cutting up uh, limes. I would take limes specifically, cut them in half and get like a bowl or a plate, a small plate. And I will pour a bunch of sugar in a plate and I would squeeze the lemon juice out of the, or the lime juice out of the limes onto this mound of sugar. And I would just dip the actual limes in the sugar and just eat it just like that and just keep dipping and eating, dipping and eating. Man, I just love that. So I don't know how I started that, but I just, I guess it was just my chemistry experiment <laughs> with food. Maybe I should have been a food chemist. I don't know. No, <laughs> but it was, it was so good, you know? So, you know, like most kids, I liked candy and I like sugar and my dad used to also take me to get candy at the store like um caramel candy he always liked caramel candy and you know he didn't think twice about giving me sugary stuff I mean who, back in the day you talking about the what the 70s and 80s and into the 90s you know who's thinking about <laughs> giving the kids like healthy snacks in Miami. Nobody, <laughs> you know, you just quote unquote enjoying and living it up. So like most people, I developed a sweet tooth. And if you know anything about Cubans, Cubans tend to eat a lot of pastries. You know, we used to eat this thing called pastelitos. <laughs> and I mean, it's like this, uh, uh, how can I describe it? It almost looks like a croissant and it has jelly on the inside. Now, uh, so I don't know what kind of jelly it is, but it was just had this jelly on the inside and the outside is sweet as well. So we would eat pastelitos. If any of my Cuban friends are listening, y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, or you had Cuban coffee, right? With a whole bunch of sugar. We also used to have this thing called cafe con leche, right? Basic coffee with milk, or you have a cafecito, a little shot of coffee. And we would dip sometimes. I remember uh, dipping bread inside cafe con leche, the, the coffee with milk, 
and just eating it. So you're talking about, man, sugar all the time, bread all the time. As an adult, you know, you, like me, probably have your own traditions that you've developed from and picked up from relatives. And it's just one of those things like, hey, this is what we do. We eat sugar stuff. You know, it could be cereal. It could be bagels in the morning with cream cheese or jelly or I don't know. You know what your t- traditions are. You know what you eat in the morning. Donuts, giving kids donuts in the morning for breakfast or pop tarts. Oh, my gosh. There's all this stuff that... <laughs> We grew up eating and we give our kids and stuff like that. And we don't realize the effects. But you know what? Um, As an adult, I started liking chocolate covered raisins. Reese's peanut butter cups and gummy bears. Those are like my top three before. I don't mess with them now. But I had to give all that stuff up, man. So what about you? What are your sweet tooth candies and pastries. Uh, Take a moment to think about it and really kind of break it down. Like, oh man, I like this and I like that. So now in terms of the chocolate covered raisins, whenever I would watch a movie, I always had to have popcorn and chocolate covered raisins. Now, for me, it could be just a plain popcorn. I I don't necessarily need the kettle corn and sea salt and all these fancy gourmet popcorns that y'all like to eat. (laughs) But you know what your problem foods are, right? Your problem sweets are. So when we talk about having a sweet tooth, I'm talking about a sugar addiction. I'm talking about cravings. You know, sometimes we just can't put it down. But, you know, I got to a point in my life where I realized sugar was a problem for me. And unfortunately, when I got diagnosed with type 2 diabetes back in 2020 and hospitalized, I was overweight, sluggish, and I felt like I was about to die I had to make changes. So we're going to take a quick break and come back and talk some more about this sugar addiction. Thank you for tuning in to the Beating Diabetes podcast with me, your host, Oscar Camejo. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and subscribe to this podcast. Be sure to share it with your friends and family, especially those you know who are dealing with diabetes. They could be diabetic and overweight and need to lose weight and basically create a lifestyle of change so that they can get their energy back and stop cravings and live a wholesome, full life. Also, if you ever want to submit a question to me and possibly have your questions featured on a future episode of the podcast, I want you to download this app called the HiHo app. That's H-I- H-O. I'll leave a link to it in the show notes. This would be a great way for you to send me a video or an audio of you asking me a question or leaving in comments. So that'd be another way for us to engage. If you haven't heard already, we have a new Instagram account. So the handle for it is at beating diabetes lifestyle. Also, be sure to follow me on TikTok. I post videos pretty much almost every day real short videos that are motivational and inspirational to keep you going and to help you to understand that you are not alone in this journey. So be sure to follow me on TikTok. So be sure to check the show notes for details and important links to all of this information that you've heard in today's episode. Now let's get back to the show. So let me say this right away. Your sugar addiction is not your fault. I know there's a lot of people that tell overweight people and people with diabetes, oh, it's your fault. You know, you have no control. You don't have any discipline. That's why you got that disease. That's why you're overweight. That's why your clothes don't fit. That's why this, that's why that. But you know what? I learned and I'm still learning a lot about the food industry and how sugar is everywhere. 
you'd be surprised what sugar is included in. I was looking at some uh, face cleanser the other day that I have, and I was just, for some reason, I decided just to turn over and look at the ingredients. And you know, there was sugar inside my face cleanser. Like, what is sugar doing in a face cleanser? That It just didn't make sense to me. So when I started my journey of losing weight so I can beat diabetes, I really started learning more about what diabetes is and what specifically type 2 diabetes is and how did I get it and how can I... Um, at first it was just live with it. You know, how do I manage this and how do I live with it? How do I deal with the having to now take medication? Is this going to be for the rest of my life? Am I going to have to stick myself with a needle all the time? You know, am am I going to have to monitor this thing all the time? It was just so confusing, man. And then one day I was at Costco and I saw this guy he looked to be in his mid fifties and this guy looked good. I mean, he was clean cut, his skin looked bright and he was physically fit and you could tell that the guy worked out. So by this time I'm already making changes. You know, I'm going to the gym, you know, I'm changing how I eat and so forth, still on medications. But I was like, I I know I was still probably like maybe 240 pounds at this time. And so I just walked up to him. I was like, sir, you know, I'm not being funny. You know, I know this is kind of weird, but I want to ask you about your, your health. I mean, you look great. What is your secret? So for about 20, 25 minutes, this man just really starts delving into the food industry, and sugar. He was like, hey, listen, yes, it's our diet and what we eat, but the main thing is sugar. And then he taught me how to read the nutrition labels on the back of foods. And it just blew my mind as to how sugar really affects our health. You're talking about from inflammation to headaches to issues with the eyes and it affects sleep and weight gain, all of that and so much more heart disease affecting the liver, having fatty liver disease and and so much stuff. And of course, you know, lack of proper exercise and so forth. So he really opened my eyes. And from that point till now, I have been just really diving headfirst into understanding more about sugar and the effects of sugar on the human body. And so when I said earlier that your addiction to sugar is not your fault, it isn't because if you look at a lot of the food choices that are right in front of you, when you go up and down the aisles, you have these processed foods that have sugar in it. You have the chips, you have drinks, you have even some of these diet foods and diet drinks, they're full of sugar. Now, in this episode, you know, I'm not going to go into the metabolic breakdown of glucose and, you know, uh, metabolism and how fructose is messing with our system. And this is the biology of this and the chemistry makeup of that. And your pancreas, this and that. Listen, I am not a doctor. I'm not a nutritionist. I am not a specialist in this. I am a guy who used to be 268 pounds, who turned his life around because he didn't want to die or have limbs amputated because of type 2 diabetes. So the stuff that I'm telling you today is based on my personal experience. Even my doctor didn't put me on a specific regimen. He gave me medications and told me, hey, just manage it, lose weight and exercise. 
And that was it. I had to figure it out on my own. I had to learn. Folks, I am at a point in my life where I don't watch TV during the week because either I'm educating myself by listening to podcasts, reading books, listening to audio books, researching content for this uh, a podcast, coming up with ways to spread the word through social media. Uh, you know, I'm on a mission to help people. Specifically, I want to help diabetics make lifestyle changes in order to lose weight and reverse type 2 diabetes. So those cravings that you have, where let's say you wake up in the morning hungry and you get something to eat, whether you stop at a drive through somewhere or you make something at home, you eat it in the morning and you have a sugary drink, then by mid-morning, you're hungry again. And so what do you do when you get to work? Or if you're working from home and you take a break, you grab some type of snack. And that snack is usually out of the vending machine or some chips that you have laying around at the house or, or something else you may have that has a whole bunch of sugar. You eat it for quote unquote energy. And then by lunchtime or even before lunchtime, you're hungry again. So you, so for lunch, you take a break, you go and go to a fast food place or you go out with your coworkers somewhere and you guys sit down and you have a whole bunch of food that you don't know what's the effect it's having on your body and your blood sugar. So all day you have this up and down spike of sugar. And you come crashing down and you're tired and you figure, okay, let me eat some candy now to curb this craving for food until you eat again. So you keep snacking and eating, snacking, snacking, and you keep going up and down, up and down, up and down. And then you have what's called a, a glucose spike. So that up and down routine of eating something, then being hungry again eating something, then being hungry again, and you you keep going on this roller coaster throughout your day, and that's become your lifestyle. Now, I'm not going to go in depth of what that means in this episode, but if you've ever seen volleyball or you've played volleyball and you someone goes up and spikes the ball, well, it takes a lot of energy for that person to jump up, spike the ball, to give that ball some force as it comes down. So when we feel hungry, we eat because we need energy. And then our blood glucose spikes. That's that burst of energy. But then it comes crashing down later on. And either we feel sluggish, we feel tired. And so guess what we do? We eat something else and we have another spike that burst of quote unquote energy because the body uses glucose for energy. And, but when you keep going up and down, up and down, volleyball spiking your, in your diet, after a while, your body starts having to produce more insulin than necessary in order to bring that sh blood sugar level down. And that's what's called insulin resistance. But when that keeps happening over time, your body becomes resistant to the effects of insulin. And that insulin that your body normally produces doesn't bring down your glucose levels or your blood sugar levels back down to normal. So imagine if Every day with that roller coaster spiking, volleyball spiking in your body, insulin just stops working and then you develop insulin resistance. That's the onset of type 2 diabetes. Listen, people, over 34 million people in America have diabetes. But guess what? More than 420 million people worldwide also have diabetes. Type 2 diabetes is the most common form of diabetes. One out of five people don't even know that they have type 2 diabetes. That's a problem, folks. So when I say this is not your fault, it's not. It's not your fault. It's not my fault. But we can do something about it. There is a problem. You and I are not the problem. But we do have to take responsibility for our own lives 
to correct and reverse type 2 diabetes. Listen, I reversed type 2 diabetes. I sent it into remission. If I can do it, you can too. See, I had to transform my lifestyle. So how did I do it? And how can you do it? I have seven simple steps that I'm going to share with you. Listen, I don't believe this stuff should be complicated. I, I honestly do not believe it needs to be complicated. These are the things that I actually did. I wasn't on a program. I didn't sign up for anything. I didn't have a coach taking me through this. I literally sat back in preparing for this episode to say, okay, Oscar, you know, you're not a physician, you're not a nutritionist, but you're a guy that actually put in the work to make this a reality. So here are the seven steps. Number one, learn about sugar and the effects of sugar on the body. Number two, stop drinking sugary drinks, cold turkey. Number three, wean yourself off of sugary foods and high starchy foods. Number four, eat more green veggies. Number five, stop eating late at night. Number six, exercise regularly. And number seven, get proper sleep. I know that sounds very, very simple. I can do an episode on each of these, and I think I am going to do that. Because to be honest, when people ask me, Oscar, what did you do? Can you walk me through the steps? Can you help me build a lifestyle like you have? Because they see how I look now and what I look like before. And when I tell them my story, they're like, wow, that's an inspiration. I want to make that change. So let me go over the seven steps again. Learn about sugar and the effects of sugar on the body. Number two, stop drinking sugary drinks. I'm talking lemonade, soda, fruit juices, high sugary smoothies, energy drinks, sport drinks. There's a whole list of things. Number three, wean yourself off of sugary foods and high starchy foods. I'm talking about making a list, going and actually looking in your refrigerator, looking around your home and saying, Okay, here's a list of stuff that I need to get rid of. And let's be honest, you may not even know if something is good or bad. You may look at a, a, some wheat bread that you have in your home. I used to buy honey wheat bread all the time thinking, oh, well, it's, it's wheat. But that wheat, that honey part is the added sugar. And it's some other stuff that we can go into um, and that you should learn about breads and so forth. But the goal is to wean yourself off of these high starchy foods and high sugary foods by making a list. What are those things? Okay. Now, not just eliminating them, but replace them with healthier alternatives. Number four, eat more green veggies. I eat more vegetables now than I have in my entire life because I realized vegetables help to control your blood sugar. I've even started eating my vegetables before I eat everything else on my plate. I mean, it's it's one of those natural things that the body does when it starts breaking down uh, the veggies in your body. Number five. Stop eating late at night. I can't tell you how many years I used to just eat late at night. Stay up late to like two, three o'clock in the morning working, doing something, or even just watching TV. And I would have a craving and just go fix a peanut butter and jelly sandwich or put in a Pop-Tart or just eat stuff late at night and then go to bed and then wake up you know, three or four hours later and go and get a egg and cheese biscuit from somewhere and just, or get some French toast and all this syrup and all this stuff. And just was eating late at night and getting up early and just this cycle of just bad habits all the time. And on top of that, like number six, exercise regularly. I thought I was exercising regularly by, you know, maybe the occasional walk outside, but I just did not have a program that I followed. But I've since changed that and I have a program now that I follow. 
Number seven, get proper rest and proper sleep. Listen, when I was only getting four hours of sleep a night, I thought I was being efficient and productive, but no, I was operating poorly the, every day thinking that I was doing good. I was not in my optimal health. I was always tired. I was always sluggish, you know, dealing with mood swings and all kinds of stuff. So those are the seven steps. In later episodes, I'm going to break a lot of this stuff down and show you exactly what I've done. So I want to switch gears really quickly and share with you two books that I recommend that you all read. So the first one is The 10-Day Detox Diet, The Blood Sugar Solution by Dr. Mark Hyman, MD. The second one is Glucose Revolution, The Life-Changing Power of Balancing Your Blood Sugar by Jesse Inchuspe. Now, both of these books come in audiobook form. I like having an audiobook and a printed book. I mean, these two books really open my eyes to sugar and glucose and how the body processes glucose and what things we are doing to our bodies through our diet that really affects how we live. I've listened to both books on audio already. Listen, that goes back into that point number one or step number one, learn about sugar and the effects of sugar on the body. I mean, that's, you have to educate yourself. I listen to podcasts all the time on health and nutrition. You know, I'm not really concerned about the latest episode of this favorite TV show anymore, because you know what? A lot of times, folks, when we're sitting in front of the TV, we're snacking on foods and eating all kind of stuff and just really not doing anything. We're being sedentary and not moving enough. So I rather listen to content that's going to educate my mind and help me to continue to maintain the lifestyle that uh, I'm living right now. Folks, I've lost over 80 pounds as of this episode. I have more energy. I'm exercising every day of the week. If not in the gym, I'm out trail running or hiking or doing something else that's fun and exciting. Uh, another thing about educating myself, um, I picked up a book on the human anatomy and just learning about the human body, muscles, and the nervous system, the cardiovascular system, the digestive system. I mean, I'm just on this education journey so I can continue to create an awareness of good health, fitness, and nutrition. So I want to wrap up this week's episode of the Beating Diabetes podcast with giving you a focus point. You know, each week I try to leave you with something to keep you thinking about your journey and to help you to stay focused and not to give up. Because you know what? There's going to be times where you just want to quit and go back to doing what you normally do. But listen, you're on this journey to lose weight, stop cravings, and get your energy back. This is not time to quit. I know it's hard, but you're building a lifestyle that counts. So here's this week's focus point. Some people may not fully support you when you set out to transform your life. That's okay. Focus on developing a lifestyle that benefits your mental, physical, and spiritual health. So that's it, folks, for this week. I really appreciate all the love and support that you all are, have been showing, the comments on social media and sending in reviews and, and so forth. I really, really appreciate it. So folks, that's it for this week. So until next time, stay focused, keep moving, never go back. Trust God. You got this. Hi, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to the Beating Diabetes podcast with Oscar Camejo. We hope you enjoyed this episode. As a reminder, this podcast is intended for motivational and educational purposes only. It is not a substitute for professional care by a physician 
or other healthcare professional or qualified fitness instructor. This podcast is provided on the understanding that it does not constitute medical or professional advice or services. If you're looking for help on your journey, seek a qualified medical practitioner. It's important that you utilize someone who is a trained, licensed healthcare professional who can help you on your journey toward good health.